るわ。ありいや、<音楽><音楽><音楽> 
Tibet now. China out of Tibet now. China out of Tibet now. What we want. We want freedom. What we want. We want freedom. You were no. We want justice. You were no. We want justice. Tibet belongs to. Tibet. Tibet belongs to. Tibet. China out of Tibet now. China out of Tibet now. Canada. Canada. Who is the killer? Who is the dictator? Who is the killer? Who is the liar? Who is the liar? No human rights. No human rights. China out of Tibet now. China out of Tibet now. Long live. Long live. Tibet belongs to. Tibet belongs to. You and all, we want justice. You and all, we want 
Stop the killing! Internet! Stop the killing! Internet! We want the... <laughs> Okay, do you want to show it? Lasa, Lasa. One, three, one! Free to me! China life! Free to China life! People die! Long live! The Lai Lama! Long live! The Lai Lama! You and O! We want justice! You and O! We want justice! One world, one dream! Free to me! Tibet belongs to Tibetans! Tibet belongs to Tibetans! Stop the killing! In Tibet! Stop the killing! In Tibet! Stop the genocide! In Tibet! Stop the genocide! In Tibet! One world, one dream! Free Tibet now! Tibet belongs to Tibetans! Tibet belongs to Tibetans!
shooting. Powerful, okay? <laughs> Come 
Bert. Turn it up. Shame, shame, shame.
Lancho! Demand the Lancho!
Le Chang
Uh, we have a statement from uh, Kashak, uh, that's the cabinet of uh, Tibetan government in exile in Dharamsala. Uh, I'm going to read it this uh, for the general public. Uh, statement of Kalyantiwa, Dr. Lawson Sangye, on the 53rd anniversary of the Tibetan National Uprising Day. Today, on the 53rd anniversary of the Tibetan National Uprising Day, and the fourth anniversary of 2008 mass protest in Tibet, I offer tribute to the brave Tibetan people who have sacrificed so much for Tibet. Despite 53 years of occupation by the People's Republic of China, the Tibetan spirit and identity inside Tibet remains unbroken. On this occasion, I pay homage to His Holiness the Dalai Lama for his vision, leadership, and benevolence. I also pay my deepest respect and gratitude to our elders for their contribution and tireless effort that have sustained our movement's growth and dynamism over the past 53 years. One year ago, when His Holiness the Dalai Lama announced the transfer of his political power to a democratically elected leader, Tibetans have apprehensive and implored him to reconsider. Today, the world recognizes and applauds His Holiness' vision and magnanimous decision. Tibetans are making a smooth transition with the free, fair, and multi-candidate 2011 parliamentary and Kalyantriwa elections that evolved exile and diaspora Tibetans in over 40 countries. I deeply honored, sorry, I am deeply honored by the spiritual blessings, legitimacy, political authority, and continuity bestowed upon me by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. In, this st in his statement at my inauguration ceremony on August 8, 2011, His Holiness said, when I was young, an elderly regent, Tata Rinpoche, handed over Sikyong to me. And today, I'm handing over Sikyong to young Lopsang Sangye. In doing this, I have fulfilled my long-cherished goal. I am also enormously moved by the solidarity and endorsements from Tibetans inside Tibet during the elections and since assuming my political post. I have had many deeply moving encounters with hundreds of Tibetans from Tibet as they generously offer their blessings and support. Blessed by the historic transfer of political power from His Holiness, empowered by the mandate received from the people, and buoyed by the support and solidarity from Tibetans inside Tibet, I can say with pride and conviction that the Central Tibetan Administration legitimately represents and speaks for all six million Tibetans. Beijing's view that a generational change in leadership may weaken the Tibetan freedom movement has not and will not materialize. The resiliency of the Tibetan spirit combined with the combined generation of educated Tibetans will provide dynamic leadership and sustain the movement till freedom is restored in Tibet. If the Chinese government's claim that the Tibetans enjoy freedom and equality are true, then it should allow democratic, transparent, free and fair elections in Tibet. In the 53 years of Chinese occupation, no Tibetan has ever held the party secretary post for the so-called Tibet Autonomous Region. Chinese hold majority of the decision-making positions in all branches of the government and constitute more than 50% of the public sector workforce. 70% of the private sector enterprises are owned or operated by Chinese. 40% of Tibetan high school and college graduates are unemployed. The Tibet issue concerns far more than rights and welfare of 6 million Tibetans. It impacts the entire planet. The unique Tibetan culture, 
with its rich language, spirituality, and history must be protected. The Tibetan Plateau is the world's third pole, as it contains the largest ice fields outside the two poles. Tibetan glaciers, the source of 10 major rivers, affect the lives of more than one and a half billion people. Billions of dollars of worth mineral resources are exploited annually to fuel China's economy. Decades of logging have reduced Tibet's pristine forest cover by half. Clearly, the manage of this global common and the Tibetan people's traditional role as its stewards ought to be a planetary concern. When China invaded Tibet in 1949, it promised to usher in a socialist paradise. In actuality, Tibetans are treated as second-class citizens. When Tibetans gather peacefully and demand basic rights as outlined in the Chinese constitution, they are arrested, fired upon, and killed as in January 23rd, 24th peaceful protest when Chinese were celebrating their new year. The Communist Party cadre members in the Tibet Autonomous Region have been ordered to prepare for a war against the Tibetan protesters. In stark contrast, in Wukan, uh, protests by Chinese people last, lasted weeks. Their grievances were addressed and one of the protest leaders was appointed in a leadership position for the village. And provincial authorities were even supported free village elections. Intellectuals, artists, and leaders in Tibet are being arbitrarily arrested and imprisoned. Thousands of pilgrims recently returning from India have been detained, and many have disappeared. Tibetans, including monks and nuns, are forced to denounce the Dalai Lama and attend patriotic re-education classes. Foreigners and international media are barred from Tibetan areas. China has built many airfields in Tibet, stationed many more divisions of the PLA, began expanding railway lines to the border of neighboring countries, and dispatched thousands of paramilitary forces into Tibetan areas. Tibet has become one of the most military areas, militarized areas in the region. Today, there is no space for any conventional protest, such as hunger strikes, demonstrations, and even peaceful gatherings in Tibet. Tibetans are therefore taking extreme actions, such as the one by 26 Tibetans who have committed self emulations in 2009. His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Central Tibetan Administration have always discouraged such drastic actions. However, despite our pleas, Tibetans continue to self-immolate with the 14 cases already in 2012. Fault lies squarely with hardliner leaders in Beijing. So does the solution. The self-immolations are an emphatic rejection of the empty promises of the so-called socialist paradise. The Tibetan struggle is not against Chinese people or China as a nation. It is against the PRC government's policies. China must acknowledge the depth of the problems in Tibet and understand they cannot be solved through violence. To address the tragedy in Tibet, I call on Beijing to accept our middle way policy which seeks genuine autonomy for Tibetans within the framework of the Chinese constitution and as proposed in the memorandum and note of 2008 and 2010 respectively. Hong Kong and Macau have been granted high degree of autonomy. Despite resistance from Taiwan, China has offered Taiwan more autonomy. Why are Tibetans still not granted genuine autonomy as stipulated in the Chinese constitution? We hope that China's upcoming leaders will initiate genuine change and, they, and that they find the wisdom to admit the government's long-standing hardline policy in Tibet has failed. We have chosen to move down a mutually beneficial path even though Tibet historically enjoyed independent status and Tibetans have the right to self-determination according to the international law. 
concerned Chinese citizens yeah, yeah. and intellectuals should make an effort to seek the truth and understand why okay. Tibetans are protesting and self-immolating. Yeah. Okay. Dialogue and a peaceful resolution to the Tibet's issue are in the best interest of China, the Chinese people and the Tibetans. We stand ready to send envoys to resume dialogue process even though the Chinese envoy belonging to the United Front Work Department has of late invested far more energy traveling around the world and making outrageous attacks on His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the CTA led by Kalantiva. In the process, they have actually further internationalized the Tibet issue. A key reason for creating the United Nations was the pursuit of human rights. I urge the United Nations to live up to its objectives and address the crisis in Tibet by appointing a special rapporteur and visiting Tibet. The international community and media must send a fact-finding delegation into Tibet to remove the wheel of censorship and disinformation campaign. Even Pongyang has an international media presence, which is not the case in Lhasa, says the reporter without borders. I appeal to the officials and member states of ASEAN and SAAD to include the Tibet issue in your agenda, given Tibet's geopolitical and environmental significance affecting billions of Asians. A China that is able to address the Tibet issue will make it a more peaceful neighbor and contribute to harmony and stability in the region. To my fellow Tibetans, now is the time to show solidarity and support with our brothers and sisters in Tibet. We have given education top priority so that educated and community-minded Tibetans will provide dynamic leadership and sustain the Tibetan movement till freedom is restored in Tibet. The Kasha would like to request that mantras and prayers be recited every Wednesday for those who have sacrificed their lives for the Tibetan cause. Younger Tibetans should embrace and celebrate our proud heritage and identity by wearing, speaking, and eating Tibetan every Wednesday. Let us make 2012 a Tibet lobby year. In this Tibetan New Year, I call upon all Tibetans and friends to reach out to elected representatives at the state and national levels in your countries. Invite and educate them about Tibet and the efforts of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the CTA. General debate about Tibet and get legislations passed in support of Tibet and the Tibetan people. Initiate activities that arise the profile of Tibetan democracy and visibility of Tibetan political leadership and the CTA. The the 14th Kashak will make maximum efforts to realize our larger goal, as well as take steps to prepare the Tibetan people and institutions for the 21st century under the guiding principles of unity, innovation, and self-reliance. The Kashak again urges all Tibetans and friends participating in various solidarity activities to ensure that the activities are undertaken peacefully in accordance with the local laws, and with dignity. Please remember, nonviolence and democracy are the two of our constant principles. The Tibetan people and current Kashak are extremely blessed to have the continuing presence and wisdom of His Holiness, the great 14th Dalai Lama. The Kashak extends absolute support to the historic statement issued on September 4, 24, 2011 by His Holiness concerning his reincarnation. We believe His Holiness alone has the right to determine his reincarnation and that the Communist government of China has absolutely no say or role in this matter. I would like to take this occasion to thank all the governments, especially the governments of United States, Europe and Asia, organizations, Tibet support groups and individuals who have supported the Tibetan people. Your support is greatly appreciated. I also call on our old and new friends alike to reinvigorate 
the Tibet support groups around the world. We need more than ever at this critical time. The Kashak would also like to acknowledge the full cooperation of the Chithu Hanzok and looks forward to a productive partnership in serving Tibet and Tibetan people. I am also happy to express the Tibetan people's deepest and continued gratitude to the government and the people of India for their generous hospitality and kindness over the last five decades. My appreciation has grown tremendously since becoming the political leader, political head of the Tibetan people. Hardik Shukriya. Lastly, to our dear brothers and sisters in Tibet, we would like to say that you are in our hearts and prayers every day. We will walk side by side with you till freedom is restored for Tibetans and His Holiness the Dalai Lama returns to Tibet. I pray for the long life of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. May our long cherished goal of freedom and reuniting in the land of snows be realized. Taram, March 10, 2012, Dharamsala. So while uh, reading the statement by Kashak, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to say a few words uh, myself. Uh, we are assembled here, and this gathering is being organized in collaboration with the Tibetan Canadian uh, uh, Association of Ontario, Tibetan Youth Congress, Tibetan Women's Association, SFT, and Chuchikandu. We are all gathered here today to uh, to pay homage to countless Tibetans who have sacrificed their life for the freedom of Tibet since March 10, 2000, uh, March 10, 1959. I would like to also take opportunity to pay homage and respect as well as to express our common solidarity with the ongoing struggle for freedom of Tibet, especially by those 26 Tibetans who have burn their lives alive uh, for the cause of freedom. One thing, on behalf of those Tibetans, on behalf of our brothers and sisters, I would like to make it very clear from this platform in Toronto that Tibetans in Tibet have now decided that they are going to be the master of their destiny. They are going to fight for freedom till the last blood till the last Tibetan on this earth. I am amazed to see here today the young boys and girls who may not know many things in their life, but one thing these young boys and girls know is freedom for Tibet. I have seen young uh, mothers who have brought the young babies in cradles on this cold weather. These babies, these mother may not know many things, but together they know what is freedom for Tibet. So I would like to say, judging on these facts, I would like to say that we have the strength to carry on this struggle. We have to have the faith in our unity. We have to have faith in the strength of our struggle. I want to, I want to, I want to make it very clear that in history, the struggle for freedom has always won. The struggle for truth has always the victory. The struggle for honesty, struggle for, for, for human rights has always won. What has lost in history are the despots, the autocrats, the trinists, the oppression and injustice and inequalities has always been the loser in history. The, with these words, I would like to remind all the Tibetans, we have to stay, fo stay focused, we have to stay united, we have to have faith in ourselves that we will free Tibet one day. And we must, we must believe every word that we say about Tibet makes a difference. Every step that we take from today onwards will make a difference. Situations are changing in the world. Especially what is happening in Tibet, I can and you can see very clearly the situation is changing. China is scared. They are sending thousands of troops for one Tibetan. One Tibetan who has no gun. One Tibetan who has no knife. But he has the spirit and the resolution to fight for freedom.
Le galon. Now we'd like to observe a one minute of mourn, silence uh, to all the brave Tibetans who self immolated themselves for the cause of uh, Tibet's freedom. Don't move, don't move. 
demonstrations that continue to the present day. Mom, Kabe was the first to restore to this action when he self-immolated on 27 February 2009. On behalf of all the Tibetans, the Tibetan parliament in exile pays homage to those who have lost their lives and pray for their noble rebirth. To those who continue to suffer we share your pain. Now we all have to put our efforts together to make sure their sacrifice do not go in vain. Why do the peaceful Tibetans have to undergo such a pain? For freedom to think, to express, to act, and of choice, just as anyone in the free world enjoys. That is an individual birthright. Burning one's body in full consciousness and with a conviction involved, thorough deliberation, with a self conviction and a mental courage, especially when one is motivated by benefit of others through self sacrifice. Under other circumstances, the tendency is normally to hurt the other. This is not the case in Tibet, the self immunization in Tibet as an act of terrorism. We would not be surprised if they adopt this view into a law tomorrow. Hundreds and thousands of protests take place in China. But when it comes to managing protest demonstrations, it is tear gas on Chinese, but bullets on Tibetans. Will there ever be a respite and a peaceful Tibetans? who just long for the return of his holiness, Dalai Lama, and the freedom. How many Tibetans lives have to be lost, killed, and a solution to found? Ah, will the whole of the Tibetan fell victim on the ongoing cultural genocide? All human beings, irrespective of differences in gender, race, color, wealth, health, and political ideology, a spare for happiness. The freely practice and promote your language, religion, culture, 
the way of life are fundamental to human happiness. Unfortunately, in the present day China, there, there are not enough sensible leaders who understand that one's happiness lies in the happiness of others in the interdependent world. Turning a deaf ear and a blind eye to the reality of the situations will have serious consequences. When the time comes, regretting what could have done, been done, and would be too late. To be a world field, whereas Han Chinese received preferential treatment for the forcing into that, better pay, natural promotions, free education, and government jobs for children, etc. These discriminatory measures are difficult for the Tibetans to digest. Touch it a It's cold. So this is Canada. But then the Tibetans know it's the same kind of weather. It's great to be here and it's fantastic to see such a large crowd. I'm very, very proud of you guys. This is uh, probably the largest crowd of Tibetans that I've seen in all the years that I've been involved with this wonderful, wonderful community. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard a lot of speeches. You've heard that long speeches, mine's going to be short. Mine's going to be short because most of the things that need to be said have been said. What I would like to add, first of all, is my great respect and my prayers for the 26 people who were prepared to give their lives for the cause of Tibet. Those who have died and are now in peace, but the others who we don't know where they are, whether they're in jail, whether they're in hospitals, but to all 26 of them, you got courage, you have our respect, and you have our prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, I think there is good news Although we still have to wait, what's been happening in the world has to be encouragement to all of the people in the world that are oppressed, particularly the Tibetans. What happened in Burma in the last little while was a miracle. The same miracle I believe will happen in Tibet and I believe it won't be another 50 years. I think it'll happen a lot sooner than that. The reason why I believe that is because as China becomes more successful economically, the people of China will solve the problem because the people of China, like you and I, cherish freedom, cherish fundamental rights, and believe and understand that as brothers and sisters the Tibetans should not be denied their rights and their freedoms. We're also working very hard behind the scenes to make this happen as you know. I participated at the election observations of the Tibetan parliament in exile. It was a wonderful experience of democracy which hopefully China is listening to and watching. I have a message, I have a message, not for all of you, but I have a message for the Chinese embassy's office and the Chinese consular offices that I know are watching and I know are taping. And the message is, His Holiness the Dalai Lama from 25 years has said, we do not want independence. We want to be able to go back to Tibet and practice our religion. We want to be able to go back to Tibet and cherish our culture. We want to be able to go back to Tibet and speak our language. We want to be proud of who we are. They have not listened. They may have heard, but they have not listened. It's time that the Chinese government, the Chinese authorities, 
listen to what His Holiness is saying because it strengthens the whole nation of China by having Tibet as a full, free, and equal partner in the state. I have no doubt that it'll happen, and has been said many, many times before, and His Holiness has said this, and I repeat it, the struggle and the problem is not with the people of China. The struggle and the problem is with the authorities of China, the PRC, the government of China. Well, you know what? You change or the people of China will change you. And that's the message which we send the government of China. I think I've probably kept you long enough. You have been marvelous. I am very proud to be here today. I'm very proud to see so many of my Tibetan friends here today. All I can say to you once again is from the Parliament of Canada, we have a very large and strong group of parliamentarians from all of the parties who are there to support you and your cause, and we will continue to do so. And from a personal commitment, I've been at this, some of you know, for the last 20, nearly 22 years that I've been involved with this community, when truly the community was no more than maybe two or three dozen, and it's now beautiful to see that there are thousands of you here. I thank you for making me part of your family and for letting me be your friend. And I will, too, make my commitment that as long as I have breath, I'll be there to support you. Pogielo. Long live His Holiness the Dalai Lama. When I talk to friends, and you are my friends, I like to tell stories. So I will tell you a story of March 10th, 1959. I was a little boy, and I turned to my father and I said, we watched on television what was happening. And I said, why are people fighting? And he said to me, for freedom. And I said, well, why doesn't everybody want to be free? Why doesn't the Chinese want the Tibetan people to be free? And my father didn't have an answer. So life has strange terms. In 2006, the Honorable Jack Layton appointed me the new Democrats human rights critic. And every demonstration in Ottawa that the Tibetan community has come to, Jack Layton asked me to attend and I was proud to stand with you on the steps of Parliament. And over and over, the same message is being repeated. Allow for freedom of choice. Allow for freedom of religion for the Tibetan people. And I want to say to you that the people in my party, the New Democrats, the members of Parliament, the people who support the New Democrats across this country from coast to coast to coast are with the people of Tibet. We believe in your need for human rights. And I say to Stephen Harper, when you're dealing with any country in the world, for trade, any country. Human rights has to be the number one issue you address. It can't be a side issue. It can't be pushed over here to be treated as something less than important. The human rights of every person in this world have to be the most fundamental thing to the peoples of Canada and to our government as we proceed with trade around the world. So I want to thank you today for the invitation to be here, to join you as you mark this solemn occasion and thinking for a moment of those 27 people who gave their lives to fire. We have a nice word, self-immolation, but they gave their lives to fire in order to stand up and show the world the importance of human rights and dignity of the people of Tibet. So I'm very proud to stand with you today and I thank you again for inviting me. In their traditional uh, uh, clothing, uh, and doing uh, and performing um, a core. We toured the Cashel Humper Monastery where several of the Pancha Lamas are buried. The hotels and restaurants are all but empty. There's no heating and limited warm water. So you go to bed wearing your hats and mitts and scarves and coats. And you do the same when you're in the restaurants. 
The third stop was Gansey, and along the way we passed very rich agricultural land and, at, and stopped at a place that makes Sampa. Many Tibetan farmers are renting. There was a very, very heavy military uh, presence during this day because that night was the, the, um, the night of the, uh, of the uh, Butter Lamp Festival, um, which we were uh, fortunate enough to uh, be able to attend. Although we had been warned that it may be not be safe to attend because if a demonstration did break out in any way at all, what happens is that you get thrown in prison and afterwards you get interrogated. But not they don't they don't ask questions first, they, they throw you in. And we were also told that children that day were told not to attend the festival um, and that they were to go home and tell their parents uh, the same thing. And all of the uh, Tibetan um, government workers were also forced not to attend uh, to attend the uh, to attend the festival. Um, we we realized that that uh, that Tibet is is important to China because it has the resources that China wants, and it also has land for the Chinese to immigrate to. And um, the Chinese support the intermarriage between the Chinese and the, uh, and the Tibetans. was a monster. The Deng Xiaoping, Jiang Zemin, and the Hu Jintao are monsters too. Those communists set up by a whole bunch of monsters, lunatics, and hooligans. We cannot forget the first time of the massacre in, the, in Tibet, 1959, and this kind of crime did not stop. It happened again on year 2008, and again on year 2010, and committed by the Hu Jintao till to now, the killing still is going on. There is no sign of stop. We are the human being. We are the. We have the right to a life. We have the right to believe what we believe. We have the right to protect our culture and the environment. We have the right to keep our tradition and to choose <laughs> who will be the leader to leading our country. Definitely not a communist. Six years of the darkness is long enough. Now is the time for us to fight. The Middle East people already gave us a very good examples. They can do, we can do. I never doubt the communist regime will be collapsed. We need more people just like you to stand up. More people's solidarity will return, will turn down that regime faster and sooner. There is 
there something everybody should do, no matter for God's sake, for the Buddha's sake, for our future and for our next generation, just let it do it. It's our glorious right and the duty to turn on that regime. Thank you. Mandela, so so get to tango in a re, pinch tango in a re, a tandaga pig in the Zarada Hola, a Samagi Pimi, a Piri Samagi, Kajichi Chugu, the Ketchum Shiraz Tongu. After that, uh, we have a guest of honor, Bernard Totter, MP South Itobiko. Mr. Bernard Totter, please. Good afternoon, Mutashi Dele. I'm really honored to be here today to uh, to meet with you. Just as I met a couple of weeks ago at the Tibetan Cultural Center in Etobicoke, it was a real honor to walk arm to arm, arm arm in arm with Dr. Lob Sangay. The wisdom of His Holiness the Dalai Lama was that he recognized that democracy is important for the people of Tibet. And your free and fair elections that you've held, Tibetans around the world, to elect your representatives, including your member of parliament, Norbu Tsering, yeah, or, or no, no, is he here today, Norbu? He was here, sorry. Anyway, the wisdom of the Dalai Lama in, in putting in a, a system of democracy for Tibetans around the world is really an inspiration to free people everywhere and also for people who are oppressed everywhere. And I do hope and I do, will, I do believe that someday Tibet will be free and fair and the people around the world who believe the same way will fight for those values of freedom and justice and democracy. So last month, Tibetans around the world celebrated, but in a very subdued manner, Losar. And that was partly at the request of Dr. Lobsang Sangay and also the, His Holiness. And we hope that next year, Losar will be much more festive. We do really want to have progress. We want to make sure that the Chinese government knows that the world is looking at them and paying close attention. We will engage them. We will continue to raise the issue of human rights and justice in Tibet. The, um, it's one thing to celebrate the Tibetan culture. We also want to engage with Tibetans economically and socially and politically and making sure that the values that we have in this country are shared and that they're learned in China, in Tibet, in everywhere Tibetans live and so that someday, and the next time we celebrate this, uh, this Losar and the March 10th, that we'll be celebrating with you and uh, looking forward to an ever brighter future for Tibetans everywhere. Thank you very much. Tashi Dele, and good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, we would like to pay our deepest respect to all the Tibetan heroes who sacrificed their lives for freedom and stand in solidarity with their family members. Today is the 53rd anniversary of the Tibetan people's uprising against the occupying Chinese army. In March 1959, Tibetans from all these provinces rose up against the overwhelming firepower of the Chinese army to protect Tibet's freedom, culture, and its religion. Today is not a day of shame or defeat. It is a day on which the Tibetans stood up against the Chinese with the courage and conviction to proclaim that the Tibetan government and His Holiness the Dalai Lama are their sole protectors. By sacrificing their lives for our cause, the Tibetan heroes have made these facts clear and as we deeply remember this day, it is important not only to remember them but also to fulfill their aspirations. From 1959 to this day, there have been three principal slogans, Free Tibet, Long Live His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and China Out of Tibet, which have been chanted by Tibetans both inside 
to bed and in exile. These watchwords are a source of strength for the living and final words spoken by those who have died for our cause. We would like to remind everyone that the truth of our struggle, the strength of our unity, proof of our history, and our aspiration are stored deep inside these words. There is something remarkably impactful when truth becomes the rally call for a movement. Martin Luther King Jr. said that the truth crushed to earth will rise again. Henceforth, no matter how much we Tibetans are being oppressed, there will always be this struggle for truth that must come out, should come out, and will come out. The 27 self-immolators to date have taken up this struggle for truth by engaging in a selfless act, not for desperation, nor blind and fruitless action, but for a new and bold protest based on fervent belief in our freedom struggle taken up by the young generation. Whereupon, they have put themselves on fire to demonstrate the grave injustice committed by the communist Chinese government. Whereupon, they have given their lives not, to not for a desire they strive to attain, but for something similar to what Sopa Rinpoche, a renowned religious figure who self-immolated on January 8, 2012 said, I am not self-immolating for my personal interest or problems, but for the six million Tibetans who have no freedom and for the return of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Tibet. And just so recently, three Tibetans have killed themselves, demanding for the same rights. They have self-immolated one after the other as they were sparking the chain of revolutionaries, sending out a clear message that a free Tibet is possible. Can you imagine waking up one day and finding out that your mother has killed herself for freedom struggle, leaving behind her four kids, then going to sleep and waking up the next morning and hearing your 19-year-old sister had killed herself for the struggle while the people in the local Chinese market were throwing stones at her while she was on fire. Then waking up the morning after and finding out that your 18-year-old brother had killed himself for believing in a just cause. What is this cause that they died for? The cause that enables three Tibetan hunger strikers to sit in front of the United Nations in New York for 18 days without food, just appealing the United Nations and the international bodies who have turned blind eyes to their fast and the situation inside Tibet. United Nations, an organization that supposedly stands for advocating human rights, promoting peace, prevent conflict, and making the world a safer place, as quoted in their own website, has failed to execute every part of it when it comes to Tibet and Tibetans. It is as though Tibet is burning and United Nations is sleeping. If you could make a difference to improve the situation inside Tibet, simply signing a petition wouldn't be enough. We therefore encourage everyone present here to please stand up for Tibetan cause. Now again, you might ask, what is this cause that it, they all died for? It is the truth, the deep conviction that no matter with all the propaganda Chinese lies, the truth will rise again from the ashes of our loved ones. Their spirits will rise again. We as Tibetans will rise again and Tibet as a nation will rise again. We will free Tibet. We united we stand, divided we fall. Pergalo! 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 And just to end this, I would like to thank everyone for being here today and supporting our cause. And also we would like to make it very clear that we are not going to let these sacrifices, our blood, go in vain. Pergalo!
Ashi Delek and good evening to everyone here. Tibetan Women's Association pay homage to our Tibetan martyrs who rose against injustice and brutality of communist Chinese regime and sacrificed their lives for the freedom of our country on March 10, 1959 in Tibet. Today, when we are commemorating the 53rd anniversary of March 10 Uprising Day, we still see the courage, inner strength and the determination to resist the injustice in the form of recent self-immolations. Since February 2009, 26 self-immolations have been carried out by 21 men and 5 women to protest against the Chinese repressive policies. Tibetan Women's Association salutes the courage and the selfless sacrifices of our patriots, but at the same time mourns the death of 18 martyrs who died in these self-immolation protests. All Tibetans who have burned themselves have called for freedom of Tibet and the return of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. And this has been our consistent play since 1959. We fear for those living under the constant threat of arbitrary detentions, disappearance, and the ruthless military control of Tibetan areas. China must realize the inevitable truth that their violence response to the Tibetan issue is counterproductive and has intensified the grievance we feel, encouraging only the greater resistance to China's rule. Tibetan Women's Association want the Chinese government to address our genuine aspirations and the demands of our 26 martyrs and advocate Xi Jinping to do an assessment of the situation on the ground in Tibet. We want him to have a meaningful dialogue with the Tibetan leadership in exile to resolve the Tibetan crisis peacefully. We appreciate the international community for their consistent support. But still, in this critical situation of ours, we feel that what they are doing is not enough. We request global intervention to save Tibetan lives. We ask the international community to apply multilateral pressure and take action against China to end the crackdown and allow free press inside Tibet. We call on Nevin Nitham Pillai, United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, to visit the troubled areas in Tibet and assess the situation with a fact-finding mission. We want at the same time to assure our brothers and sisters in Tibet that we are and will always be with them. Their sacrifices, courage and perseverance under the repressive Chinese policy will not go in vain. China and its power can kill us, but they can't destroy our spirit, our courage and our devotion to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Truth will prevail and we will be reunited in our country Tibet. Long live His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Pegalo! 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I would like to request today, uh, right now, uh, the youth, especially the youth, the students and the young adults, to give me an ear today. I want to speak about this truth that our families have worked so hard to preserve. It comes in the colors red, yellow, blue, and green. It comes in the form of our chubas, and it comes in the form of truth. And I want to talk to a little bit about this truth. This is the 53rd year that Tibetans and supporters around the world are gathered on this important day for Tibet. In 1959, thousands of Tibetans had risen up to protest China's occupation. Since then, more than a million Tibetan lives have been lost in this ultimate battle of peace over brutal might, of truth against oppression and injustice. But Tibetans inside Tibet and Tibetans around the world are speaking to each other right now. Like a child separated from her mother, our desire to reunite cannot be repressed any longer. And that desire was ex expressed in the clearest way possible in the past few years and a few months 
26 people have burned themselves. And thousands of thousands of Tibetans have risen up, in, risen up in protest, calling for freedom in Tibet and return of the Dalai Lama. Once again, China has stamped hard on Tibet, put it under lockdown, but we have heard the cries of our nation. And like a child that has grown up seeking justice, we will never forget the atrocities by China on Tibet. On our brothers and sisters who are being punished for only expressing themselves to this day. Tibet will be free because it is the fate that we have written with our hearts. Tibet will be free because next year will be 100 years since the 13th Dalai Lama declared independence in Tibet. And that is a truth that cannot be changed. Tibet will be free because we believe it and we'll keep saying it. Tibet will be free because the moment China spilled the first Tibetan blood, it confirmed our doubts and our suspicion about China's motive in Tibet. China hears loud and clear. Tibet is a land of great scholars and compassionate monks. But Tibet is also a land of great kings and warriors. Today we are here with the wisdom and compassion of the great monks and scholars, but also the courage of our great warriors and kings. With our actions, we intend to change the course of history by proving that your bullets may pierce Tibetan hearts, but they will not take away our determination. Every person you shoot, 1,000 people will rise up in protest. Every family you destroy, 1,000 families will speak about them. Every song you stop, we will sing 1,000 times louder. Because we have the truth on our side. Because we are free here in Canada. We are here and we are free. And we will fight until Tibet is free. We are here and we are free. And we will fight until Tibet is free. We are here and we are free. And we will fight until Tibet is free. We are here and we are free. And we will fight until Tibet is free. We are here and we are free. And we will fight until Tibet is free. Thank you, Allah. Oh, Tashi Delay. It is a, such an honor and a privilege uh, to be the member of provincial parliament at Parkdale, for Parkdale High Park and to represent so many of you at Queen's Park. And I want you to know that just a week ago, I tabled a motion to declare that March 10th should be called Tibet Day in Ontario. Uh, the majority of the House agrees with me, but we still have some convincing of the minority of the House to do. So I'm hoping that by next year we can raise this flag at Queen's Park, where it belongs. <laughs> I also want to thank you for all your prayers and your hard work and your spirit and your determination because you stand not just for Tibet and freedom for Tibet, but you stand for human rights and civil rights for everyone. Thank you. Because if Tibet is not free, none of us are free. And that's true. Uh, I want to also say that in the history of this world, uh, dictatorships, regimes like China's have never lasted. We saw the dissolution of the USSR. It ended not with a war. It ended quietly. So will China's dictatorship end without a war. It will end with its own people rising up and because of your love and pressure. I was just listening on the radio and I was hearing that now more than ever there are demonstrations happening throughout China. People are rising up against the inhumane conditions that they face. And we should send our prayers their way because the undoing of China is a freedom for Tibet. And that's for sure. Uh, 
my EA and I were in Nepal and I want to let you know that we are also trying to work here with our uh, federal friends to try to rescue some of those Tibetans that are stranded in Nepal. We need to have every Tibetan free and able to migrate to freedom to join you here. So we're working for that as well. It's, it's a cold day here in Toronto, but you and your love warms up our city. So as a Canadian, I thank you. I thank you as your representative in Park Del High Park for bringing your love, your prayers, and your peace, and the presence of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to our neighborhood. Thank you for that. I also have a statement here from your MP, Peggy Nash. And you know that Peggy was one of uh, those who is part of the uh, Canadian Friends of Tibet, and we also now have an Ontario Friends of Tibet. So you do have friends everywhere. She says, Tashi Delay. <laughs> As the Member of Parliament for Parkdale High Park, I want to thank the Canadian Tibetan Association of Ontario for inviting me to your parade. This is an incredible honour and I regret that I am not able to attend. Today is an opportunity to come together and celebrate Tibet. Today also marks the 53rd anniversary of the Tibetan National Uprising against Chinese rule in Tibet. At a time when the Tibetan people struggle for peace, justice, and freedom in Tibet and around the world. Let us take this opportunity to spend time with friends and family and recognize the strength of our community. Parkdale High Park is home to the largest Tibetan community in Canada. Over the many years that I have served this constituency, I have come to know and understand the deep devotion the Tibetan people have toward their language, religion, and culture. I have met the 14th Dalai Lama on a number of occasions and have been able to convey to him my personal support for the Tibetan people. Most recently, my NDP colleagues and I have spoken passionately in the House of Commons about the self-immolations that have been committed by Buddhist monks and nuns in Tibet. I have also personally written the Minister of Foreign Affairs about these self-immolations. Unfortunately, on a recent trip to China, the Prime Minister and the Government of Canada did not take any strong diplomatic action to save Tibetan lives. I value and honour the work that the Canadian Tibetan Association of Ontario has done for the Tibetan community and our country. Together, let us continue to promote social justice in our world and protect human rights and basic democratic principles. Bod Gyalo. And I just add my voice to hers because we know it's just a matter of time. Tibet will be free. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the Thank you very much for the time. It's really cold. I see everyone in ours uh, really uh, it's quite chilly out here, but you all have st stood here from to, I mean from morning nine o'clock to now four o'clock. It's fantastic. I see the great support here by the team. And I think I thank you all. Thank you once again. It's uh, and I'm sure being at Dundas Square, we all understand. We know the people around here at Dundas Square. We know our Eden Centre. We want at, at the street park everywhere. Everyone sees us here united, and I think that's really important. And we and as we all go back 
to our own homes, back to Jameson, back to all your places. I hope, I hope and pray that many more people see the struggle, many more people see that we want freedom and we are here for Tibet. Pay your loan! Long live His Holiness! Pay your loan! Thank you very much. And Tuji Chena, Tangwala, Ali, Shimwa Nip, Pegay, Yagaj Gag, Tuji. Thank you.